So just for our loving audience, I wondered if you would just give us an idea of how you began chocolate and then what led you to the business you have right now. So who would like to start? Okay, I'll start. Yeah, um, <laughs> so um, I began my journey by uh, making chocolate, um, basically utilizing my space in my house. So it was a home-based business for the first four and a half, five years until I uh, locate this location because there was not a whole lot of uh, rental available or the, the rental was not suitable or it was way too expensive. So uh, that's, uh, I started as, as a home base uh, as well as going to the farmer's market to bring my product and as well as wholesaling. Um, so the farmer's market was excellent because at the time we were able to uh, to have uh, to offer samples. So, so I had like direct feedback from my customers. And so there was many recipes that came and went uh, because I realized that people were just not that, that excited about uh, about some some, some uh, project a project that I was doing. But uh, mainly, this is how I started, and I developed all my recipes this way. And then this place became available uh, because of the pandemic. So, uh, you know that uh, that's how uh, that's how it began. So I looked for a, a place that was a little bit more affordable. Uh, Kentville is up and coming in uh, Nova Scotia, so. Um, you know, the, a lot, there was another community nearby that uh, a lot of that I wanted to go, but uh, the rent was absolutely ridiculous for the space you get. So, uh, but this one here had a good foot traffic. Uh, the orientation of the windows was fine because of chocolate. You don't want to have a south-facing windows if you can. So uh, this one has a north and east facing windows. So I get the sun maybe like for an hour in the morning. That, that's about it. Um, so yeah, that's what I was looking for. The price, it was good. There was a lot of foot traffic up and coming. So uh, there are now two new artisan shops that open since I opened. So you know, uh, it, it was a good idea. I think that now if I were to try to rent the same space, I would pay a whole lot more. So it's, it was worth for me to wait and pick the right place. Excellent. Thank you so much, Mark. Uh, yeah, so I came to Chocolate, I, I, it was a, in 2015. Uh, I had, didn't know anything really about chocolate at all, and uh, I was backpacking through Central America, and I run into some people who had cacao beans and were just snacking on them and eating them, and we we ended up traveling together for a month just eating cacao, and I was just very puzzled that whole month. Like when you look at a cacao bean, it it doesn't really look or feel or taste or smell like chocolate. It was really like seedy and nutty and but not chocolatey. And so I really began my journey sort of slowly, just kind of pondering how does this become chocolate? And then you realize you you pan fry it, you get all of those aromas of chocolate. They start to come out, and then it's like okay, so this this is chocolate. I can, I can turn this into chocolate, I'll, and I'll, I'll, I'll food process it, I'll heat it, it'll melt, that'll become chocolate. And it, it didn't, obviously. Um, and so it, it was just kind of like, again, just kind of trying to piece it all together. I brought, ended up bringing a bunch of cacao back to, to Canada and uh, just going around trying to find people who could help me turn cacao into chocolate. And I realized that there weren't really all that many people that could, that even knew what I knew about it. And it was a huge eye opener to me. It was just a big shock because I thought chocolate was a very common thing. And I really just didn't even think about it very much. And as I started to talk to people, I realized that there wasn't a whole lot of information or education out there about what chocolate is or how it comes to be. And so, uh, that really began me on my journey. I ended up working for a chocolatier, uh, not making chocolate, but working with chocolate. And it gave me really great exposure to the industry. And I was selling uh, truffles in a market and then making 
uh, do, you know, I, I did a lot of caramel making and, and different things in the factory. Uh, so it, it gave me a really good uh, kind of understanding of what everybody else knew about chocolate. And but still, it wasn't quenching my urge. I still didn't know. Like I wasn't aware of the bean to bar chocolate movement at this point until I, I stumbled across the uh, the chocolate alchemy blog and. It just like blew my mind because all the questions that I had were right there. Like it, 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 it was a grassroots movement. It was a small blog on a website with, you know, very niche chocolate people all contributing and asking questions. And, and it's like, okay, this is it. So like within a day of being exposed to the blog, I, I bought Melangers, a Baymore, a, a 10 different cacao beans from all over the world. Uh, and then they they came in. I set up the the home factory. Um, I was just coming back from travel, so I didn't have any furniture or anything. So it was perfect. I just had a, a little basement apartment that was just a chocolate factory. And and so I spent a year just making those ten different cacao beans, turning them into chocolate without really like going out for feedback or without. I just want it. 10 different origins, all 70%, all two ingredients. I just wanted to taste the profiles side by side. And it took a long time to get there because you have to figure out winnowing and uh, like all of the different things along the way. Uh, and so once, once I had it, I, again, my mind was blown. These are all very different. Like uh, you read that the mm -hmm. that chocolate tastes different, but it, it, you just don't until you taste it. That's when it really yeah. becomes real. Uh, and then so we set up our business model. I met Victoria, my partner, during this time frame as well. So we both became immersed into it kind of together at, right at from the beginning. Uh, and and it's it it, it helped to shape our business. Uh, because we, we have our own uh, strengths and interests and, and we kind of work together and, and kind of uh, develop who the business is, what, what is our identity. And so we, we worked for three years. Uh, we, we moved to another house with a commercial kitchen in the basement that we, we installed it. Uh, and then for three years we were there and then we moved to St. Andrews. We were looking for a town that had existing tourism that somewhere that was close to the U.S. border uh, for importing the cacao directly uh, and, and then exporting. And then we wanted to live above our factory because uh, we'd only ever lived above our factory and it's the only life we've ever known. So it's hard to imagine not. <laughs> so we, we, we live above our factory. And uh, yeah, so we've been here for uh, three and a half years now and uh, the business has really evolved and, and taken shape over the, the time. In the beginning we were strictly two ingredient chocolate makers and for just about three years we only did dark chocolate. Just It was just different origins. We did tastings. We, we did a tasting model where we would go and unpack our suitcase and have 14 different origins on the table and you know like we, that was the approach that we took. Over time, we evolved our business. Uh, we introduced a milk chocolate. We uh, started doing uh, different flavor inclusions, but nothing too crazy, really just starting from foundational stuff, trying to build onto things. Uh, and so, but we, we ended up getting into white chocolates, which I never didn't think that I would, but I, I'm super excited about the potential of white chocolate when you add different ingredients uh, so that none of our white chocolate is actually white. It's different flavors and things. But uh, so, we, yeah, and, that, and now we're, we're venturing into truffles as well. Uh, single origin truffles, again, very, we, we, we're, we're not a super flashy company. We, we like to kind of mm. let the chocolate speak for itself. And so we're, so that, that's kind of where we're heading with the chocolate, but also with the move, we, we started making ice cream and bread and we have a cafe for drinks and hot chocolates and uh, just different ways that we can kind of showcase chocolate uh, in different ways, but also uh, utilize our core, uh, our core food philosophy, which is simplicity, just like not having additional ingredients and like bread, yeah. it doesn't, bread doesn't really fit with chocolate, but the only ingredients are flour, water, salt, yeast. It's just, it's a beautiful thing because it's so simple 
and it doesn't need to it doesn't need to have other things it's just like put these ingredients together follow a specific process and you get you know something that's that's really amazing and and people can relate to bread for really easily like you no explanation required mm -hmm. uh, but that's yeah that's kind of uh how we got to where we're at and yeah no, that's great. And it's interesting because we all have such different stories. Like for me, I've always loved chocolate. And like everyone, you know, I liked milk chocolate to start. I uh, wasn't a big fan of white ever. And then I really wanted to learn how to love dark chocolate because I thought like if there was more cocoa. It was healthier for me and it was different. And I had a really hard time because of this taste, but I started doing it with inclusions. Like you can get almonds and fruit and nuts. And I really got into it. And as I traveled in the world and went to Belgium and different places and started tasting like higher end truffles and chocolates that were cared for more than our regular products were found in industry chocolate around the country, I started realizing how much more capacity chocolate is. And then I had this dream that I really wanted to learn how, even if it was just for a hobby. So when we moved to Manitoulin Island uh, on like Huron in Ontario, I met my first bean to bar maker. Like I had had like green and blacks and some of them like Zazu beans, some of them more like fancier kind of production chocolate. And then she blew my mind. I just was like, how can this be? And I have only heard of it now. And that was in 2015, same year as you, Mark. And I just, just couldn't fathom eating something else, right? And started upping my game and finding different chocolate. And uh, my job changed and I had some time. So my husband I actually worked with Lisa Beth's husband. So I approached him and asked if she would ever want to volunteer. And he's like, what do you mean volunteers? Like I'll learn for free. He's like, well, she'll pay you in chocolate. I was like, well, to me, that was like the best, best thing you could get. So I uh, approached Lisa Beth and she'd been scaling and needed help. And she was an amazing teacher. She took me from everything. So I was lucky to be her apprentice from learning how to winnow to, we spent so much time hand tempering, which thank you, Lisa, <laughs> because <laughs> of the skill, right? Like, oh, the things that I came up with and like, you know, and at the same time, our love of chocolate and we do tastings while we try and she always start to teach me something, of course, samples. And, you know, she would tell me when things didn't work out well. And I was like, either this can be a happy uh, hobby or a career. And then I, I just fell in love. So it was really sad to leave the island for Lisa Beth and her chocolate because we really worked well together, really talked about flavors. It was really nice meeting someone that you can meet, you know, intellectually and emotionally and all about mm -hmm. chocolate. Well, that's what brought us tourism, right? Like there's more provinces close. There's a lot more people who come here. Um, so originally I settled up in Hampton and we just realized it wasn't the right place. So we just, just moved to Minamichi and a lot more tourism, a lot more throughway traffic and just a lot of excitement of trying new things here. So the only issue with the pandemic and everything, like, I think you both touched on is just doing chocolate is really hard. And I was right beside a cafe. So I really had no flexibility of what I would do. And even though I offered hot chocolate and stuff, because there was a cafe there, it's a really hard sell. So here we, I also created my cafe with all idea that everything goes with chocolate. And the theme is what can I do tastings with? So that started coming into the theme of having the cheese and doing the coffee and to salute the bean of the coffee bean. I only do pour over and, and French press because there's other coffee shops. They do the espresso. I don't need to be everything for anyone. And I just figured if I was going to need niche chocolate, I might as well be niche for a lot of things. So again, same thing, simplest ingredients, clean, everything's done with the whole grains in house, very simple, all about the taste and the flavor um, and with truffles, I've been doing them since the beginning because I've always loved truffles and I always found it really difficult to find a dark chocolate truffle. There's a lot of wonderful white and milk truffles. So mine are predominantly dark, but I'm actually starting to explore some more unique flavors, which is really fun. And yeah, so it really just brought me back to like put everything I've always really loved together into this new venture, which has been really exciting. Um, so I know you touched on the pandemic a bit, Gabrielle, about like that space really being available to you because of the pandemic. 
Mm -hmm. Have any of you or all of us had any type of shifts or has the pandemic brought opportunity or non-opportunity that has kind of made us pivot even more or expand or has any of that happened for any of you? Yeah, well, um, yeah, well, we, we've just, as you mentioned, like we had to diversify. Uh, chocolate wasn't, um, you know, the only thing that people were looking for. Um, I also lost a lot of wholesale uh, wholesalers as well because of the pandemic. Um, the airport was a really good seller for me. So now they're back um, online. So that's great. But uh, we also, um, you know, we, we're looking at, we start making ice cream this year. You know, thinking, uh, you guys, uh, I think Mark does ice cream too. Do you make ice cream too as well? No, no, I no. make ice cream bowls. No, there's ice cream places close to me. And so I'm okay. just staying to the fudge yeah. school for now. Yeah. Oh, perfect, perfect. Yeah, yeah so fun. that has been successful for us making uh, different things like plate or desserts. Uh, our location is used to be a cafe. So people all the time coming over and they, they want us to make salad and sandwich. It's like, well, no, uh, this is not what we do. So the, the location, um, you know, tends to make people uh, wanting that. But um, because of the pandemic uh, as well, the space next door was, became as well available. And they were thinking about putting a business there that would have been conflicting with mine, uh, basically a gym. There would have been loud music when I have like a dining space where people come over to relax. And so it's like this, I can't let that happen. So uh, I also, I was running out of room. Um, I didn't know where to stack my cocoa beans after a while. So therefore this place became available and decided to go ahead and, and rent it. And it comes with a kitchen in the back. So um, for the first uh, six months, I was just using it as a rental space. Uh, I mean, just a, a storage space and a place where I had some of my equipment, but basically it became, um, yeah, it was important that I diversify. So um, yeah, so we also uh, are looking into creating more things with, um, with, um, with local farmers. So, uh, so we're, we're developing a cookie line right now. So we have a, a, a farmer nearby who uh, mill his own grains. So he makes flowers. So, you know, we try to, uh, every ingredient that comes into our space is inspected to make sure that, uh, you know, it's sustainable and we're not making uh, a negative impact anywhere. So the, definitely no palm oil. And even I'm st I started to stay clear from vanilla. So I've developed uh, some uh, product with uh, what's called Boreal vanilla. And it's uh, from uh, made in, uh, it's actually grown in Quebec. It's a sweet clover. And um, our customers really love it. So we've been using that uh, a little bit into our offerings as well. Um, so yeah, so basically I'm digging deeper into looking. Uh, the Annapolis Valley is, is full of producers. So it, would, it only makes sense for us to look uh, as closely as possible. So you might have noticed that uh, about two weeks ago, I asked local like on Instagram, hey, local farmers, I'm looking for you. What do you have? Reach out to me because I, I want to make something um, possibly with you. So I had uh, since then uh, quite a few farmers that reach out to me. Uh, I make a, a chocolate bar with candy cap mushroom, but my mushroom was from BC. So I was not really happy with that. But uh, so just yesterday, a farmer walked in and said, hey, by the way, um, I have a uh, candy cap mushroom on my property. So, you know, so reaching out to the public and asking them, hey, what do you have that I could possibly uh, make chocolate with? Uh, so, yeah, diversifying. Um, we're thinking about making mole sauce. We have some uh, pepper growers in the, in the region. So that's another project we're doing. 
Oh, that's excellent. That's wonderful. And it's great that we have such great produce close to us. How about you, Mark? Mm -hmm. um, well, it's interesting. You both kind of touched on it that customers will want you to be everything to them. Yep. They'll suggest all of these different things that you should do. <laughs> and almost none of them make sense uh, if you, you know, think it through from a, a business perspective. Uh, but, you know, in the, in the beginning, you certainly you try to, well, I mean, always you try to listen to everybody. Um, and so we, we went down in the beginning of the pandemic, we went down the path of sandwiches. Um, mm -hmm. And it, it just really wasn't, like, it, we kind of like look around and you're, you're just so far from your core and where where your the strength of yeah. your business is, and we try to look at like there, there's a lot of elements of our business. We we already had diversification built mm -hmm. into our move, uh, where we we took on ice cream because of chocolate is tougher to ship in the summer, so we need something to offset the revenue. And we're primarily an ice cream store in the summertime, um, yeah. and the the coffee works year round, and the bread does. Uh, but there's a cap on what you can do in these areas because they're all low, they're, they're, they're tied to your local market. And so like uh, you, we can only make so much bread. We can only sell so much bread. You have to sell it the day you make it. So investing in your, your time and your energy in, in these types of spaces is something that we, we want to, well, we have it to bring people in and to, uh, you know, kind of like create a base. We, we want to pivot away from them and focus more on scalability, things that we can focus on outside sales and getting the website. We're, we're redoing our website. We, we had always developed our own um, and, and it worked fine and there was no, no reason to go away from it. But when you try to just step back and think big picture and, and, uh, we like we spend so much time troubleshooting and trying to figure things out and you eventually do but we, we we just kind of made that decision to try to develop a professional website with professionals and let let them do the development work and try to set it up so that we can increase sales and and get get more traffic through the direct-to-consumer website. So it's something that's in progress. It's not launched yet, um, but it, it's a, a step in the direction that we're trying to get to where we can focus more on, on shipping chocolate um, and then continue. We have to always look at what we do in store and make sure that it makes sense, make sure that we can staff it because like ultimately you do all of these different things and your baking cabinet is full. And, and then if there's no staff, then you have to do it all. And like we mm -hmm. start shaping bread at five 30 in the morning and our cafe is open until eight o'clock at night. And, and often later because you're serving ice cream and people are still there. So some days I'm there from five 30 in the morning until eight 45 at night. And if, and some days there's no staff at all. So it's just Victoria and I with my mom and the kids. And so you, you have to really take a good hard look at everything that you do and say like, should I be doing this? Yeah, maybe I, I sold some of it, but I, you know, I spent a lot of time and like, you know, like it, it's kind of the reality that we're living in right now where labor is so tight. Like we got two resumes this year, hired them both on the spot. One quit the next day or within a week. And then the other was only there for a couple of weeks. And so like, there's just not a lot of people to work. And again, it's like focus on the core of the business. And then if thing, other things have to drop off, you, you kind of have that priority set list, but they're, they're hard decisions. They're, they're tough. Like we've got a lot of, a lot of, you know, bread customers that just, you know, really love us and depend on us. And, you know, to just say like, we're going to walk away from bread maybe wouldn't be the best decision but we have to kind of figure out what that all what that all means and how that all fits and, and how we can develop a realistic resourcing strategy uh to sustain and that that's mm -hmm. kind of our biggest challenge at the moment well and it's true because when i was in hampton i loved my space and i thought oh great i'm right beside a cafe that'll attract but it really doesn't unless someone goes in and so when i was developing this model with that i talked to well, 
both of you and several other chocolate makers, but also other uh, owners of cafes and stuff. And one of the best advice I got from Cécile, who runs a cafe in Petit Rocher, uh, which is close to us, was be simple, start small, do little hours, and then grow. Because I'm, as of now, only one. My husband helps with books and stuff, but his job is, he's got a new job as well, and it's super demanding, and he does a lot of extra hours. So it came the reality is what can you do as a one person, one woman show? And I do want to hire, but until I know what's happening, like I really can't. Chocolate, staying true to chocolate, making sure that my mission and my vision is always clear. So that's when the idea of like, but chocolate tastings, if that is my motivation, what goes with chocolate? How can I play? How can I bring all these elements in one place so that if I want to do a cheese and chocolate tasting, I can, and I can play with cheese and chocolate. Or um, I've always made crepes and I was like, I don't want to use bread. I don't want to do that. There's a lot of people doing that, but crepes with chocolate, crepes with different things, maple mm -hmm. syrup is one of my main elements is the lava maple syrup so it started creating this idea and then with the coffee and stuff like I had a lot of people coming into shop when the cafe was closed oh do you offer coffee do you offer tea and it's got me going like those are really great drinks to have they're really wonderful with chocolate and it gives you that little bit of a cafe element but again you get a lot of people coming in go oh do you offer a London fog do you do an espresso and it's like no I don't but it's also wanting to stay true like that. Like the idea is like, oh, well, if so many people ask, maybe I should do it. But I like the diversifying and the idea that um, there's enough to do is, is difficult. So, uh, and the pandemic really switched me because I started the business in shop because of the pandemic, because I couldn't sell at market anymore. And the pandemic really shifted the tourism and what people did. And it showed me that, um, I have to grow. I can't just do chocolate and I need tourism as much as you need a bigger audience for people. Cause like you said, there are certain things we start with and we just decide it's not viable. I've been lucky that I've been able to focus on chocolate, but, and I don't want to lose that, but honestly, it's just not enough. And um, because I am gluten-free and I haven't baked non-gluten-free in forever and don't even know, wouldn't be even able to taste anything all my stuff is that I just don't broadcast it because people will eat it if they like what it looks like. And then anyone who comes in with an allergy, they're like, oh, so what's gluten-free? And I go, everything. <laughs> and they go really excited. But I just decided I wouldn't broadcast it. I have it in my window saying I have gluten-free, but I think a lot of people think it's not, which is great. And when it comes to crepes, they're really not traditional. And I tell the people right away, this is a non-traditional experience. Do not expect what you get anywhere else is a crepe. This is not traditional. And I guess that's been my big thing is like, I don't do natural traditional chocolate either. So I might as well just stick to my guns and, but it's really, really hard. Um, so that we don't have that much time left because everyone's so interesting. So is there anything you'd like to share about projects, wishes, or goals? Like I know that Mark, you talked about, you know, the, the website, which is exciting because I know I'm going to try to tackle that and inclusions this year focusing on inclusion bars and I know Gabriel you were talking about all your projects about mole and working with farm mm -hmm. uh, so yes yeah, so um, upcoming projects um, well there is the one in Costa Rica mm -hmm. so um, yeah we're going to the this farm where um, this is a farm that has that I've been going to for the last uh, four years, five years. Uh, and um, so, yes, yeah, so I want to take part of the learn more from them. Uh, so we're going to be uh, talking about, uh, you know, like participating to the fermentation, the harvest, uh, drying. And then in turn, we will, uh, I, I've been going over and helping their staff as well to develop their own recipes. Uh, they didn't know how to temper chocolate. Uh, so that's that's like in, in the spirit of partnership and, and, and sharing. And um, and yes, it looks like you're coming as well, Dominique. So this is excellent. 
Uh, but we also uh, have another project that we're working. It takes a lot of my time. And this is to develop this space here, that second space. I don't know if you hear in the back, Peter is actually sanding the wall. Uh, he's painting today. Uh, so, you know, I think that's such a large space. So we're about uh, 2,500 square feet right now. Wow. A little bit more. And there's four of us uh, with Peter, that's five uh, part time. But uh, so, yeah, we, we all know each other's job too, which is excellent. Uh, but no, the, what I'm working on right now, it is a, a ACOA, uh, Atlantic uh, Canada uh, Opportunity Agency. Uh, there's a tour tourism relief fund that um, they, uh, uh, they uh, give us some uh, fundings uh, through another company to develop uh, experience. So uh, the Tourism Relief Fund is basically in uh, developing some experience that will attract tourism. Uh, uh, and so you become like an international, if you like, uh, destination. And uh, so there's gonna be uh, film uh, videography happening. So it's to launch in uh, April of 2023. But basically uh, our experience that we're developing is it's all about egg chocolate, obviously. So people will come in and uh, since I have two kitchens, that second kitchen that we've been using as a staff room is now evolving into um, a tourism chocolate making place. So my original equipment, which some of it I sold to you, uh, I still have a couple of mel a smaller uh, melange and uh, so I'm going to bring people in for about two hours and they will be uh, making their own chocolate bars. So as you probably guess, after um, the once the nibs have been roasted, cracked and winnows and, and then put into the chocolate, the chocolate won't be ready. So we bypass a step where we then once the, the uh, chocolate has been started to the melanger, we're gonna give them chocolate um, that's already made and then they'll pour and create their own inclusions if they want and pour uh, and temper their own chocolate to make because they want, uh, essentially people want to leave with something. Yeah. They'll, they'll create five bars, they'll hand wrap it. But there's also the possibility of having um, like, uh, but like wedding parties, you want to have your own chocolate confections uh, for your wedding, but why not having your, uh, you know, like your, 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 yourself and your bachelorette or to help you guys, uh, to help each other to make some chocolate for the upcoming wedding. And so, and then we work closely with a, a, a printer right across the street so we can design packaging really quickly for them so they can take something home that is designed for them. Um, so it's also for, for the um, co corporate. So usually corporates, they want to have like team building uh, activities. So that would be good for them as well. Uh, so yeah, uh, we're gonna get our liquor license and uh, the uh, we're going to be using that space that Peter is kindly painting to, uh, because it's quite large, it's more than I need, uh, to have more experience around chocolate. Such I'm as, just gonna stop for one minute. Um, yeah. We only have a minute left. Rag and I okay. can start a session just so we can wrap up. Is that okay, Mark? Absolutely. Yeah. Okay, so finish up and then when it goes out, we're gonna have another session and then Mark, you can we can both finish. Okay, so, sorry, go ahead. Yeah, no problem. So basically that's what it is. Uh, we're gonna have different things with chocolate, uh, live music with chocolate. Uh, nice. Yeah. Yeah, so that, that's basically it. So uh, I would strongly recommend you guys to, because uh, especially for you, what you mentioned, you want to do a lot of different things with chocolate and uh, pairing events and whatnot. whatnot. Uh, Check out the Tourism Relief Fund and um, you might, there might be something in there for you. Awesome. Thank you, I will. How about you, Mark? Uh, actually, Gabrielle, I've got some questions. I, I really enjoyed your session. Um, and I wanted to know um, 
the experience that you're planning when people come in to make chocolate, I think it's a fantastic idea uh, and very creative that you're cutting down the grind. Um, what, what's your total time that you anticipate from a customer walking in the door to a customer walking out? What, what do they, what's their, their time? Yeah, about two and a half hours max. And they're roasting in that time? Yeah, so uh, they uh, they're gonna be roasting. If you like, I can send you uh, the schedule that uh, that I, that uh, it's just a draft, but uh, because we're still developing this. But yeah, it's like roasting, uh, they're gonna hand sort their beans. So it's really much hands on. Like you start in your basement uh, with the old winnower, uh, you know, the bucket. Yeah, uh, and, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and so. And then, um, you know, people will, um, will uh, be uh, dressed with chef coats and aprons and everything. So I was talking to um, the health inspector uh, because as you know, that we're not able to um, give them the chocolate right away, right? So with the batch that they start, they're not gonna be able to take home at the end of the day. Uh, but I've seen it done too, that uh, there is uh, companies that actually, they use like a little pestle and mortar and they, they just like crack their own, yeah, they try to make it, or if you had a metat, you could actually do it by hand. But I think like ultimately the finished product is gonna be quite deceitful for the, for the customers. So the participants will uh, we'll uh, add the cocoa beans and everything to to the uh, you know to, to the whole thing. So once the um, the that part is done and they they've added the nibs, then this is where I'm going to bring them cups of chocolate into like a, a small tub if you like that will be for about five and a half bars if you like so, and then they're going to be seeded. I don't think I'm gonna be doing the marble slab thing. It's gonna be a mess. So they're gonna be seeding it directly with, uh, you know, the um, if you have an easy temper machine, that's what I'm gonna be using. So they can actually temper their own chocolate, monitor the temperature, and then pour uh, one mold of uh, five bars. And then uh, I would have uh, like, five or six different inclusions that I, I would have gotten from uh, local farmers. So, you know, it's very local as well that people, if they want, they can customize their bars. Uh, and then while they're gonna be having, while the chocolate, their chocolate bars will crystallize, um, we're gonna be having a little bit of a, a chocolate tasting, um, think high tea, that's yeah. something planning as well to so people have a chance to um to have something special uh as well as having a uh, either like a glass of prosecco or chocolate martini so you want to create an element of surprise as well so people mm -hmm. take a lot of um a lot of um you know they, they're really proud to be able to hey i even got this for free but it was part of the plan but they just don't know it mm -hmm. so and you're able to command like a lot of money for that. Uh, I expect to be between $80 to $120 per participant. Okay. So if you do that once every, you know, then you can, you can change your experience. We're going to make an experience as well with children for making the same thing. Uh, you, know, you know, the uh, it's going to be modified, obviously, because you don't want them to be touching raw beans, first of all, because it's gonna go right in their head, mouth. Um, but also you want to make sure that they, they get to, to do some part themselves. Uh, we, we um, uh, some of our customers learn with making experiences and we want to make as well an ice cream experience. So some of our customers brought them their ice cream maker they're not using from home. Now we got three. so. So for, uh, you know, to utilize the back kitchen that we have there, um, the health inspectors is now just checking to make sure that that chocolate batch, if that uh, the, the participant have created, whether or not we can sell it as part of our own offerings 
down the road. But um, a lot of corporate event and would probably uh, want to utilize this chocolate uh, to label it for their own clients. So that's really what we're going to do and uh, to make sure that, uh, you know, they can utilize their chocolate and say, hey, we did this, here's a bar for you. It's, it's that much more special and personalized. So um, that's what um, we're expecting to get probably roughly 20% of our uh, revenues will come from experience. Oh, wow. Yeah. That's awesome. Cool. That's really good. Yeah. Uh, so if you like, um, I can certainly send you the, uh, uh, some of the uh, projects because they, there's a team that is actually helping me to do this. So there is a gentleman uh, called uh, Celeste from uh, Earth Rhythms, who is a professor at, he used to be a professor at Memorial University mm -hmm. and he developed, that's what he was doing. He was in tourism and experience. He kept, he kept coming to see me at the farmer's market one, a couple of years ago and he said, seriously, you got to go into experience. This is where the money is, is. You don't have to sell that much chocolate because people want and will pay good money to learn how to make it themselves. And even if it, if it gets interesting to most times people just want to, to have like a hands-on experience and they can brag about it. Then they'll put the social, uh, the, 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 their photo on social media that, yeah. hey, I created this and everyone's going to go, wow, we got to try that to do this. So, yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's exciting. You know, I think, yeah, yeah that's, there's a whole bunch of projects and uh, different things to really immerse yourself into. So, yeah. Exactly. And if, if you can send across, along any info, that's great. Like we, we always play around with different possibilities. So, uh, hmm. yeah, I think that's cool. Awesome. Yeah. We're pretty thrilled about it too. I don't blame you. That's awesome. Anything else from your side, uh, Mark? Uh, so for us, the the main focus coming up, we're we're putting ice cream season in our rearview mirror soon, and we're going to be able to focus a lot more on chocolate. So it's a, a an exciting time of year for us. Um, and so we're we started dabbling in the truffle space. Uh, the the idea got put into our head um, about almost a year ago. We were undergoing a marketing exercise where we were interviewing our, our favorite customers. So we, we would identify people that we didn't know, people who that were just, you know, regular buying through our websites and that, you know, we basically identified our ideal customers and then we, we interviewed them. Um, and we got lots of really great insights. We, we profiled them and then we, we pulled it all together so that we could have a fictional character who is our ideal customer. Uh, and that's who we, we market to is that fictional character. Um, but we got um, a whole bunch of, of really cool insights. And one of them was uh, uh, this customer had found us because they were just like really searching for quality chocolate. And uh, they, they, they'd had um, some chocolate in Belgium and they, they, were, they were eating truffles and they, they weren't particularly, they didn't love a lot of the stuff, you know, fancy, lots of flavors and they, it just wasn't speaking to them. And they mm -hmm. found this one chocolatier who was doing single origin truffles. And they'd never heard of this before, never like they're just a, a, con a consumer, not in the industry, not, uh, you know, the idea of single origin is was, was new to them. And so they had a truffle that was no flavors, like just the cacao is the flavor. And, and they were explaining this experience to me and then they, they moved back to, to Manitoba and they were looking around, like, where can I find something like this? And they just couldn't. And they, they happened across our website. They saw our subscription. So they start, we, we, we mail them chocolate every month on a theme and, and write a little intro to them. And, and they love it. They've been on the subscription for years now. And, uh, and they're, they're really great. They, they're always kind of giving us feedback and what they love. And uh, so it, our chocolate was the first 
uh, time where they were like, this is it. This is the flavor I was tasting. Like, this is just chocolate and it's like, it's, it's mind blowing. And so having them kind of wrap that around, it really helped uh, me understand because I, I I was not a, a particular fan of truffles in, in the idea of using one chocolate and then using flavors to differentiate them that it, it does and then decorating them it just it doesn't excite me um, but the idea of the using a, a cacao as the flavor is nothing else added and being able to have a lineup of single origin truffles and then the bars beside them so you can taste them in, in yeah. the truffle format and in the bar format so that that did get me excited and then the idea of not using a standard shell not developing a, a, a coverture and using the same one but using the same chocolate in the shell as in the center. And the logistics of all of this is actually, you know, it's crazy because you have all of these different covertures, all of these different chocolates, and then the workflow, the storage, though, you know, it's, all, <laughs> it, 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 it's not simple and that's why it's not done. Uh, and so we're, we're developing our lineup of single origin truffles, but also our white chocolate uh, is, we use freeze dried fruit. And uh, so we, we just had our carrot cake bar won a gold medal at the Academy of Chocolate, which we're super excited about. Yay. Um, That's yeah. wonderful. Yeah, it, it, like I, I've, I, and this, this bar was kind of just a flyer, like we, we were making a strawberry white chocolate and so looking for freeze dried strawberries and we just kind of happened to cross uh, carrots on this freeze dried website and it's like hmm awesome yeah, can carrots I make, cake, yeah right? carrot cake white chocolate you know carrots pecans all the spices and and yeah. kind of embody a carrot cake in a chocolate bar I uh, love and that. I had, no expectations going in but as soon as the, everything hit the grinder and started to smooth out and then you start tasting it like I was just in love with this chocolate and uh so I'm super happy that that won a gold medal and so That's amazing the idea <laughs> with the truffles is that again we want the shell to be special. We don't want the shell to be ignored. We don't want it to be, because that's the standard thinking is the shell shouldn't enter the flavor of the ganache. It should be thin, it should be non, you know, it should just be all about the center. And we're, yeah. we're trying to flip that on the head and we're saying it's all about the shell and, and how the shell interacts with the center. And so uh, the one element of the carrot cake bar that we didn't get into the bar, we were like, for me, uh, I love carrot cake. It's my favorite cake. And the cream cheese frosting is like really kind of pulls everything together. And so we were looking at how can I get cheese into the chocolate? And like it, uh, eventually we just, it's really hard to find things that are just simple. Like, you know, I'm not going to buy freeze dried carrots if it's carrots plus citric acid or carrots yeah, plus something exactly. else. Like yeah, it I'm has to be just I'm carrots. Gonna, yeah. And so to find a dry cheese that's just cheese is not super simple. Um, and so we, we just exonate it and we just make a carrot cake bar without that. But with the truffle, we can yeah. do a cream cheese filling with the carrot cake on the outside. And now it's like kind of that full circle vision. Um, and so we, we're using all of our white chocolates at, well, the ones that we choose, we, again, you have to limit the scope because it gets crazy. Uh, but we're, we're, and we're only doing a few at a time. So we're, we don't want to be a shop where you walk in and there's going to be a whole bunch of things to choose from. Like truffles are a nightmare because they're fresh. Like they got to yeah. be consumed within three weeks. If you're using a Ganache. Death life is, is such a nightmare, isn't it? Oh, it's terrible. <laughs> I love chocolate. I love chocolate so much. Like it, it, it sits on the shelf for over a year. If you, if yeah, you have a no temper, problem. Like just set it and forget it. You know, like it's it's amazing. Yeah. Like oh, it's so great. And it, it it's I've been always anti truffle in terms of get putting my business in that direction. And so this it was a huge mat. Like and we're still just figuring it out and trying and going slow with it but but this would be the ramp up we want to be ready for Christmas we we've got our, our boxes coming in and we want to we want to be able to communicate this message we want to we want to 
you know, see, does this get gain traction? Like St. Andrews dies in the winter. It's a ghost town. So it's all about outside sales. And so uh, like, can we set up our business? Because again, we tried to buy truffles from different shops uh, around Canada to see like, what's the buyer's experience of bringing in truffles. And it's, it, you can't, it, the, the shipping is just incredibly, incredibly restrictive. Uh, and so, because it's, it's hard, it's, it, you know, they're, they're, they're delicate, they're fragile, they need to get there fast. They're like, you know, so we're, we're trying to see if we can make that work um, yeah. and using this as a, a pilot year on it. And that's kind of our, our focus is launching the new website, launching truffles, uh, and just seeing how that plays out, and then we can assess what where to go from there. Well, that's wonderful. I can't wait to taste these uh, because, like I said, for me, one of the big things was really dark chocolate, like dark chocolate truffles. And I've considered as well using my own coop, like my own chocolate. And I do sometimes in certain circumstances for specials, I actually use my 70 or my 80 and I put it around. Um, but part of it for me is capacity. So I think that's great. You guys are producing at a one. I think I can't wait to try them. Um, <laughs> I realized last February that my website has such little traction. So with uh, getting a marketing person in and helping, and we've installed a YouTube channel, that's why we're together and stuff. Um, but there is some funding available for web website marketing right now through the province and I can send that information to you guys but also like my the city of Miramichi is insane with what they can do and there is tourism grants through the city itself to help with this stuff so I'm just trying to figure out what I want to do but focusing on my website like you said to get chocolate because it's extremely hard to get wholesalers especially with our price point and I get people yeah. interested in my truffles but again with the shelf life it's just really hard I much prefer to send my truffle to the customer than to a wholesaler and then it's just it is a nightmare I agree completely yeah. yeah and so um one of the things that I've kind of been hesitating with my bars is I've been really keeping it to origin like sing do I do bark I you know and coming from a small place where I had a lot not a lot of people I didn't actually get to play a lot it was very limiting so I'm really excited about being here because there's definitely more food traffic. But this year, my goal is to create three inclusion bars. Seasonal, different, push myself to really, really focus on an inclusion, matching it perfectly with an origin, making it as different as possible. I'm actually working on <laughs> a fall bar, which has more of a savory note to it than chocolate, but it does go with chocolate. And my goal is to just kind of be outside the box and do that. And then the website, figuring out a way to connect because there's so much amazing chocolate in Canada, both of you included. Um, and there's a lot of things happening and it's just wonderful, Mark, you like winning that gold. I can't tell you how I'm so excited. Someone here in Atlantic Canada, like you guys rock. And then Gabrielle, all the experiences and the reaching out, like, it makes me so proud to be a Canadian being a bar maker. So for me, yeah. it's like, where do I sit in this? What do I, as I go and I'm going to be shedding some uh, origins and I'm bringing in some new origins and I'm really trying to find a different way and like just figure out really what I am. And I am like, I'm much more of a rustic company and I really want to keep to that. Like my truffles. Yeah, I have a mold for the centers, but they don't look the same. And I like that. I don't want to say, oh, like they're not. And sometimes I'm like, I give them out. And I'm like, they're not really perfect. And I have customers going, what do you mean? That looks gorgeous. Give that to me. So I'm trying to remind myself that I can have that rusticness and my bars can be beautiful and I want them to be beautiful. But I'm really trying to figure out how do I bring in inclusions? What really matters to me? And I'm really interested in roasting, but that's really difficult right now just because of like having just an oven. So my focus is really about flavor. It's all about figuring out kind of what that niche is and getting it out to the public, really trying to focus on getting that website, like you said, to much further along. So people want to come in and, and 
and try my chocolate and uh, not having any excuses. Like, yes, I have a milk bar now and I'm really proud of it. And I have two oat dark bars and I, I love it. And I want to play with that. But my dedication to wanting to stay mainly a dark chocolate company with these beautiful additions that I love is great. And I love white chocolate, but it, I continually will decide not to do it just because for me and sugar, it's just not a good fit. Hence why I love that you all make wonderful dark white chocolate because there's a lot of mm -hmm. white chocolate lovers out there. And I love carrying that in a bunch of the milk because there's so much better quality when you're getting good chocolate. Out Absolutely. Of white chocolate. I've converted many. <laughs> yes, of course, but Minamishi looks like I'll keep an analyzing because it's a new market that they love the, the variety. So for me, it's really like not being worried about what I think I need to do, but doing what I want. So this year is really about, I think, paring down and playing and kind of seeing where I go for. And then just getting the tastings and people really looking at chocolate as not only an experience, but, you know, a fifth food group. That's <laughs> in that's a way, you know, and it's not about sugar and it's not about sweetness. It's really about experiencing yeah. flavor. And that's kind of where I am trying to really be and see where, where it comes from. So I agree for me, this year is all about getting to know my market, figuring it out and really hashing out those inclusion bars. Cause I've been really staying away from them. I really, really have. So this year is about inclusion. That would be fun. Yeah, I like that. Uh, have fun with it, you know. Yeah. Look, look what's around you, and and then try it. Yeah, <laughs> it's like the the, first, the people that come over and then they see I have mushroom in my chocolate, and the candy cap mushroom, by the way, tastes and smells just like maple. Yeah. So yeah, so people are like really, and then they open the bar and they go like, wow. So that, that is one of our uh, biggest seller. But yeah, so just, just look for, my advice to you would be just look for what are you excited about? You know, mm -hmm. like that mushroom I became really excited about when I was 15. It's like, wow, there's a mushroom that tastes like maple. That's I'm awesome. in. But um, we, we use different things like uh, I have a white chocolate bars with balsam fur. Mm -hmm. um so the fur tips you know they're kind of lemony uh, when they harvest in the spring and that again you're gonna have some customers that all they want is they want the dark chocolate or they want just the white the, the milk chocolate but you're also gonna have a, there's a large i would say probably 20 percent of my customers they're the one that look for the craziest thing you can put on as long as it's tasty yeah. They're going to go for it. And they look for that kind of stuff. So I would say, yeah. you know, um, just just give it a try and see what people say and have fun with it. Um, like I make my, I mean, my, uh, I, I know you were not a huge fan of this one, the cranberry and thyme, uh, but people call it their turkey dinner in a chocolate bar. <laughs> <laughs> and um, I also made the, a gingerbread bar, which, um, while, I, while I was uh, making the chocolate, I tasted my favorite gingerbread cookie and mm -hmm. then taste the chocolate and then adjust the flavor and the spices based on uh, what I was tasting to make sure that it represented that particular cookie. Yeah. Yeah. So have fun with it. Uh, I would have to say I was very much like you were. And I'm like, nah, that's I'm not interested. But then I realized how fun it can be. And uh, then, you know, people will uh, are still interested to my, uh, my traditional single origin, but it's not the same people that want to try all of the other stuff that you can come up. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's true. Well, Again, thank you so much, both of you, for your time. I know you're super busy and you doing this with, with me uh, on our YouTube channel. So if you're interested, please like, subscribe, and share. And um, 
and look out at these pages. We'll have the information of their page and who they are on our YouTube channel so that you can reach out and go follow Gabrielle at Petit Patrie and Mark McGuire and Victoria McGuire, his, McGuire, his partner at McGuire's Chocolate Company. Both of them are in Atlantic Canada. Mark's in St. Andrews, New, New Brunswick, and Gabrielle's in Kentville in Nova Scotia. So they're not far apart. We're all worth it. Follow us and uh, come and taste our chocolate because you will not regret it. Awesome. Thank you so much, Dominique, for yes. organizing this. It was a Thank pleasure you. talking to you both. It was as well. Have a great weekend, everyone. I hope you sell a lot of chocolate. Woohoo! Yay! <laughs> See ya. Bye.